Hi, welcome to the Filtering Feature Tables tutorial. I'm Lena Kim, and I'll be your tour guide today. Filtering is really helpful for large data sets like from this fantastic study, which has over 10,000 samples and 500 million total features. Now, that's a little too much for our workshop here, so we'll filter for samples and features that we're interested in. Let's get started by heading to our Galaxy server. Through this tutorial, I'll flip back and forth between this tab and this one. This tutorial page to follow the instructions and the Galaxy server page where we'll implement these commands together. Now, as a heads up, my history looks slightly different from yours. You've been going through a few tutorials, so you'll have much more in this right hand history. For the sake of this tutorial, I've kept just the sample metadata TSV, which will come in handy later. Now we're going to upload two data files for this tutorial. Let's start by heading to Upload Data at this button right here. We'll keep this tab at Regular. We'll go to this Paste and Fetch Data button. Here in this first text box, we can place the name of our new data file. In our tutorial page, we're told that we want to call this feature table.qza. So the .qza tells us that this is a Chime artifact. And this is the full feature table that we're interested in. Copy that, paste that here. Next, we can add the link to the file that we want to download. And that link we'll also get from our tutorial page. Copy and paste here. We don't need to set any of the other options. We'll just press start. When we close that, we see that it's uploading now and it's uploaded. The second file that we want to upload is going to be the ASV sequences. So here we'll go to upload data again, click on paste and fetch data. This new file name we're told is repseeks.qza and this represents all of the ASV sequences that we're interested in. Copy that, paste. And in this text field, we want the link to where the file is. Copy that from here. And also paste. And press start. Great. Now that's been uploaded. Now we want to look at the Chime 2 formatted study metadata to refresh our memories. So my sample metadata TSV is already loaded in my history here, and it should be in yours too. You might already have a summary in the form QZV or Chime visualization. If you don't, like I do, then you can follow along with me. I'll generate that uh, metadata summary, QZV, very quickly. And if you want the instructions, they're also right here in this dropdown. It tells us that we want to run the tool Chime2 Metadata Tabulate. So let's head back to our Galaxy server. On this left-hand side, we have a list of different Chime2 tools that we can run, and we want to run Chime2 Metadata specifically tabulate. That's right. Uh, we want this input to be a TSV file since that we, that's what we started off with. We want the metadata source to be exactly this, sample metadata.tsv, and we'll execute. And that's gonna run for a little bit. We'll wait for that to run. Great, it's finished running. First thing that we want to do is we'll click on this little pencil to edit this file, edit the data set attributes. And we want to rename this because right now it has this unfortunately long name. Our tutorial tells us that we want to name this metadata 
hyphen-sum.qzv. So remember the QZV is, is for chime visualization. So we'll copy and paste that into here. And save. Perfect. And if we want to take a look at this visualization, we'll just uh, click the name of the file. We get this really nice drop down and we'll head down to view at chime to view. And this is going to open another tab, which lets us take a look at how chime two sees the metadata. We'll get this giant interactive table. Perfect. And you've seen this before. We get this different sample IDs. We get the different patient IDs time points, all sorts of clinical data about the sample and about the patient. Next, we want to generate summaries for the feature table and the ASV sequences. Let's head back to uh, the homepage for our Galaxy server. So we just looked at the summary and we still have our feature table and ASV sequences as Chime artifacts. We want to generate summaries for both of these. Now you've already done this during your Dada 2 tutorial, but we're working with a new feature table and new sequences here. So let's run the summary again. Back to the tutorial. So we want to use this Chime 2 feature table summarize tool. We'll head back to our Galaxy server and right here on the left hand side, we have Chime 2 feature table, Chime 2 feature table, summarize. Here we are. We have to scroll down a little bit. And that's right, we wanted to use this feature table.qza that we just uploaded. Under additional options, we do want to insert the sample metadata because we want to associate the metadata with the feature table. And these default options, metadata from TSV and sample metadata.tsv source look great. So we're just going to execute that now. And that's going to run for a little bit. I hope your computer or your internet is a little faster than mine. Actually, it doesn't really matter, does it? because this is a Chime 2 Galaxy server. Perfect! It's done running. Similar to what we did earlier, we want to click on this pencil to edit the attributes of this new data set. And we are going to rename this Feature Table Table. No, table.qzv. That's what we want to do. Instead of this unfortunately long name, we are going to keep it table.qzv and save. And because this is a QZV file, a Chime visualization, we can also view it in Chime 2 view. Let's take a look. This feature summary table is very cool. We get all sorts of summary statistics as well as visualizations that tell us more about this feature table. We get a bird's eye view without having to look at every single line. As an example, right here we see that we have the total number of samples, somewhere around 12,500, that are represented in this feature table. We have somewhere around 18,000 different features. And when you look across all of these samples, we have a total of 550 million features that are in total represented in this feature table. That's a lot of data, wow. And most samples, if we scroll down here, we see do not have 200,000 features per sample. No. Uh, we do have one sample at least that has 872,837 features. That's pretty incredible. That is the maximum. But on average, the mean the average uh, sample has somewhere around 44,000 features per sample. It's not too bad. And we can also take a look at how often each feature shows up. So a single feature might show up in a single sample once or multiple times. 
and of course the minimum frequency of a feature to show up is one but you know on average the mean a feature tends to show up 31,000 times across either one or multiple samples so that's pretty pretty impressive so that was just the first tab that we looked at. This is the overview tab that gives us a summary of the feature table. We can also look at specific samples if we're interested. This might take a little bit to load. Great. We have all of these different sample IDs. If we had one that we were particularly interested in, we could uh, yeah, control F and look for that. We can take a look at how many features are in the sample. We can also play around with the different metadata categories and the sampling depths. So say if we were interested in the, yeah, in the, the transplant source, we have all sorts of different types and we see how well they are represented. We could also play with the sampling depth a little bit. So this is the minimum sampling depth. If we take this to say 14,124, we see that if we remove any if we remove any sample that does not have this number of features then we tend to remove yeah quite a number of samples from the PBSC unmodified donor source and we remove a little a little fewer number of samples in the bone marrow unmodified so this is an interesting uh interesting statistic that you can play around with. In the last tab in the feature detail, we can actually take a look at how well the features themselves are represented. So all of these are represented as uh, alphanumeric strings. Uh, all, and all of these we can trace back to their respective um, ASV sequences later. But right now we see that each feature for each feature, we can see the frequency and we can also take a look at how many samples that they're observed in. Wow, this one feature shows up more than 60,000 times and shows up in almost 10,000 samples. It's a pretty prevalent feature. I'm really curious about it. So if you wanted to know more about this particular feature, you can copy this alphanumeric string and we can take a we can relate this to the actual ASV sequence by taking a look at the rep seeks visualization later. So the se so the sequence summary, and that is what we're going to produce next. So we just created a summary for the feature table. Next, we are going to tabulate sequences. So we're going to create a summary for all of the sequence data that we have. We want to run Chime2 Feature Table Tabulate Seeks. So let's head back to our Galaxy tab. We're going to head to Chime2. Let's see. Was it Chime2 Feature Table? No, it wasn't Feature Table. It is Chime2 Feature Table. Chime2 Feature Table Tabulate Seeks. Right here. We are going to run this, yes, with the repseeks.qza file. And we don't need any other parameters. We're just going to click execute. And that's going to take a little bit of time to run. We'll let that run for a bit. Great. And of course, the next step that we have is we're going to edit this data set's attributes. We're going to rename it. Our tutorial tells us that we want to call this repseeks.qzv. So we'll copy that, paste that in here, and save. And again, because this is a QZV file, we can take a look at this visualization, this Chime 2 visualization for each sequence. Wow, look at that! We get to see a lot of summary statistics for a sequence length. So as an example, the minimum length of each sequence is 300 nucleotides. Not bad. 
The maximum length is 348. And something that's very interesting down here is we have the sequence table. So I told you earlier that we have this alphanumeric uh, string that relates to a specific sequence. And we see here that we're able to relate these alphanumeric strings that we saw in the feature table summary to the actual nucleotide sequence. We can do that ourselves for a feature that we were interested in. So we have this over here, this is the Feature Table Summary tab. I just came back here to take a look at this specific feature. Very interesting, very well represented with a high frequency and a high number of samples. Let's go back to our Sequence Summary tab and Control F and Control V. Let's look for it. So this is the sequence that we were interested in. And this is a nucleotide sequence that corresponds to this ASV. If you look closely here, you'll see that this nucleotide sequence is actually a hyperlink. If we click on this link, it'll take you to the NCBI website. And this enables you to perform a BLAST search with this nucleotide sequence against NCBI's database of different uh, genomic data, which is very exciting. So this 332 nucleotide sequence, we can uh, align that against all these different genomes of all sorts of different organisms, and we can get a better idea of where this nucleotide sequence came from. So all you, you can play around with some of these uh, parameters, you can decide which organism you want to search in, and you can click View Reports and send in that request. And this will probably take a while to run, so I will not be waiting for this to finish. Let's move on to the next step. Oh, wow. No, that was fast. Okay, it finished. So we see right here that we get the matches to that particular nucleotide sequence. And the best matches are all two different enterococcus strains, which is uh, pretty consistent. Not bad. If you're curious, you can click on some of these links, take a look at the alignments. You can even take a look at uh, yeah, the sequence ID and what GenBank says about this particular sequence. So there's a lot of exploring that you can do with this data. It's very exciting. But we must move on. Next, after we've uh, summarized our feature table as well as our representative sequences, we want to filter the feature table to the auto FMT study samples. So we started off with the data from this particular study. And this study actually contains data from multiple, multiple different studies, including this one. Here is the auto FMT study that we're interested in. Now, how do we get data from just this study out of the data the complete data set that we got from this study. Now to do that, why don't we go back to our metadata tab, one of the first, uh, one of the earlier tabs that we generated. Here we are. So this is a visualization, the metadata summary that we created earlier. If we take a look across some of these columns, we'll see that there is this column called auto FMT group. And most of the entries for this column are actually blank, which means that they're coded as null within the actual uh, table. But if we decide to sort this, we see that there are a number of samples that are coded as treatment within auto FMT group, which means that this particular, sam this particular sample came from a patient who was part of this auto FMT study and received the treatment. See if we scroll to maybe the fifth page, we see here that we have samples that under auto FMT group that are considered controls. So these samples were also part of the auto FMT study, but they were not given the treatments, they were given the controls. And of course, we have all sorts of other samples that have blank entries under, under this column, which just means that they were not part of this study. So knowing that, let's go back and uh, filter 
all of our data to look for data that was only part of this auto FMD study. Heading back to our uh, tutorial, let's filter our feature table. So let's go to run this tool, chime to fil feature table, filter samples. Chime to feature table, filter samples. Great. Using this tool, we'll take a look at our feature table and we'll filter for only the samples that were part of the F FMT study. Yes, we do want to use uh, this input feature table.qza, this artifact. And we want to click here for additional options too. We see here that we have the option to insert metadata, which we do want to do, and we want to take these default options. And we see here that there's also this uh, where, where parameter that we can fill. We don't want this to be none. We want to be able to provide a value. And the value that we provide will tell Chime how to filter this data. And the instructions are included here. So we want to set where to this string auto FMT group is not null. So we want to make sure that in the metadata table, the entry for auto FMT group is not empty. It is not null. Let's go back and paste and execute. I hope this doesn't take too long. Yet again, we'll want to edit the attributes. We don't want this terribly long name. We want to call this auto FMT table dot QZA. And let's save that. Perfect. Next, it looks like we can summarize the feature table again to see how it changed as a result of this filtering step. We'll see uh, how many samples it removed and how many features that it removed. So let's run Chime 2 Feature Table Summarize once more. Chime 2 Feature Table Summarize. Yes, we want to use it with Auto FMT Table. We are going to include the metadata and execute. And while it does that, I'm going to close out some of these uh, tabs from our blast search, which we will not go back to. Great, it's finished. We will rename this to auto FMT table summary dot QZV. Great. Wonderful. And because this is a QZV file, feel free to take a look at Chime 2 view and take a look at what the summary table tells you. Next, we want to perform some additional filtering steps on the feature table. So Right, first thing that we want to do is it looks like we want to focus on a specific window of time. So lots of different patients were observed throughout different time points, but we want to choose a specific time point uh, range that is common to a number of different patients. So let's look at the 10 days prior to the transplant through 70 days following the transplant. Let's use a feature table, filter samples. Chime to feature table, filter samples, wonderful. We do want to use this auto FMT table for additional options. Let's see, we're able to insert the metadata, so we want to do that. And we also want to set this where, provide a value for where, so we can filter it accordingly. We want to set where to this particular string, 
set the day relative to nearest HCT between negative 10 and 70. And execute. And it's finished running. Let's edit the title or the name of the file again. Let's call it filtered table one. Perfect. Now in our next step, we want to have one more uh, filtering step. And this time, we'll actually filter features from the feature table if they don't occur in at least two samples. And this is just to reduce runtime of your downstream steps. We don't need to do this in your own analysis all the time, but we can speed things up a bit. So let's run Chime 2 Feature Table, Filter Features. Chime 2 Feature Table, Filter Features. Yes, we want to filter them from Filtered Table 1. We want some additional options. And here we see that we should set minimum samples to two. So minimum samples to two. Perfect. And let's execute. Great. Let's rename this again. We can call this filtered table two. Fantastic. Now we have a, a feature table that's been run through a couple of different filters. Now, after all of this filtering, it might be interesting to compare how all of this filtering changed our feature table from the very beginning. So we can do that by generating a summary of the latest filtered feature table. And we have instructions down here. We can run Chime 2 Feature Table Summarize with this new filtered table too. Let's do that. Back in our Galaxy server, we look for Chime 2 Feature Table Summarize. We want to run it on Filter Table 2, and we do want to associate it with metadata. Let's execute that. And this will create a summary visualization that we'll be able to explore so we can see differences. And it's finished. Let's rename this file filter table to summary.qzv. Save. And at Chime 2 view, let's take a look. Wow, that is a pretty dramatic difference. We now have around 400 samples around 2,500 feature, 2, features and 23 million total features represented in this feature table. This is far different from what we started off with. One of these tabs has our original feature table, not this one, not this one. Well, it was this one maybe. If we head back to the overview, we started off with 12,500 samples and 18,000 features 550 million total features across all samples. And this has decreased quite a bit. Just by filtering for samples that are part of the auto FMT study and by removing features that show up in fewer than two samples, we're able to reduce the amount of data that we had in our filter feature table by a lot. 
from 12,000 to 400 samples. It's pretty incredible. It's a lot of work that we did right here. So we still have one final step that we haven't done. And that is we want to filter features from the sequence data to reduce runtime of feature annotation. So we filtered features from our feature table, but we haven't yet filtered the features in our sequence data. Remember, we started off with a feature table and a number of sequences. We filtered this, but we still have to filter our sequences. So let's do that now. We want to run chime2 feature table filter seeks chime2 feature table filter seeks we do want to run this on the repseeks.qza and we want to uh, include additional options so we want to set our table here to filtered table 2.qza filtered table 2.qza and we will execute Great, that didn't take so long. Let's edit the name of this data set. Let's call it filtered sequences one. And these are all the filtered sequences for the features that we are interested in. And that is the end of our filtering feature tables tutorial.